Are you serious? Are you serious? I mean, guys, we got some information on the International Space Station cooling system that failed. Now, last night, I did breaking news as soon as we found out that the International Space Station got into trouble. There was breaking news. CNN reported that of the two cooling systems that keeps the space station from overheating, one of those cooling systems on, on the exterior of the space station broke down. Uh, of course, there are six uh, astronauts up there right now, two from America, I believe, one from Japan, and three from Russia. And here's a picture of them right there. These six are up there right now uh, on that space station. And they are in a little bit of a trouble without, you know, you can't deny that. Because if that second coolant station was to go down, then the, they would be in severe danger. But they are in danger simply because they lost one. That's enough. Well, here's what's unbelievable. I'm going to give you an update of what's going on with the space station. But yesterday, yesterday morning, I think it was? No, what? Yeah, yeah, yesterday morning it was. It was the 11th. Uh, Jesse Waltman at BP Earthwatch, who will be our guest on today's live show, did a video called Data on the Fireball that exploded over Arizona slash Ison. And he gives you some information about the fireball, the meteor that it blasted, exploded, shaking houses and cur uh, creating quite a stir over Tucson, Arizona. But in the report, he also started talking about the comet Ison and its effect it could have on the International Space Station. And he even tells us that there was reports that NASA said, you know, God can even knock the space station out of the sky. Well, that was in the morning. He, he, he reported that by the evening, the International Space Station had one of its main cooling systems go down, and they may still have to have one of these astronauts go outside on an emergency spacewalk to, to try to repair it. They've had to shut down three of the compartments uh, on the space station. Here's, here's exactly what uh, Jesse said. I'll play a little bit of his voice, and then I'll give you an update on what's going on with the space station. But here's his report, um, and uh, here's what he said. He said it yesterday morning, and it was just a few hours later that we have a crisis. I also want to read you two reports, one about Mars in Siding Spring and about ISON and the International Space Station. Now, they're becoming more concerned. You can pause this and read it, but they're even investigating techniques of what could be used to prevent cometary debris from hitting more Mars orbiting spacecraft as the comet and planet converge. Mars-bound comet was only discovered January 3rd. That's this year, guys, 2013. They always say distant or cloud. That's always the excuse, and they never even proved the or cloud existed. It's just they, wherever. But anyway... They are, the Mars-bound comet was discovered again just this year uh, from the, the Siding Spring Observatory in Australia is where it got its name. Now, again, the closest approach, October 19th at 11.45 a.m. So you, we've got a spread here, guys, of events happening like the trumpets that we're about to start seeing up until this time. It said that it will be sunward of Mars. It says it's a slight possibility the comet could graze or even hit Mars. The safety measures would include postponing the orbiter so they are on the other side of Mars at the time of coming impact. Now, if that's not crazy enough, guys, they, <clears throat> in this exciting spring, you've seen the JPL on it. It's going to be coming in from... So, again, there, there's concern that uh, Comet Ison, that some of the debris, some of the asteroids from it all, uh, some of that may actually hit Mars. Uh, I don't believe we're going to have impact on Mars, to be honest with you. I really don't think so. Uh, but, but, of course, we want to continue to uh, monitor that. Uh, let me see if I can find where Jesse talks about the space station. Here we go. They even call it, the, the Hop, uh, he even says here that the Hopi Indians had a prophecy about when the great house in the sky falls. And then, uh, you know, and now the space station is considered a house housing these six astronauts. I'm going to let him talk to us more about that this afternoon in, the, uh, in our live broadcast from 12 noon to 3 p.m. Eastern. 
But let me tell you what is happening as well. The International Space Station's cooling system, the six astronauts aboard the ISS are said to be conserving power. They're conserving their power after a failure of one of the two external cooling loops circulating with ammonia. If, if it is not fixed, a spacewalk may be the possibility of the, to fix it, an emergency spacewalk. The failure isn't the first for, a, for the International Space Station's cooling system with the ammonia leak reported back in May. Is this thing starting to fall apart? Um, the Expedition 38's crew members are on board, and they're not in danger as we speak, not now. But the International Space Station's cooling system has failed, leaving the orbiting space crew powering down some of its systems as a precautionary measure. The astronauts aboard the International Space Station are said to be conserving the power, protecting themselves, of course, as they sail through space. Now, we'll get more information about the International Space Station as well as the Comet Ison uh, and information that we're gathering that, that the Comet Ison uh, is, seems to be off track after that perihelion uh, that it actually went off the track when it came apart some. NASA is officially saying that it's no longer a comet, but now they've been saying that for a while. Uh, they said it was a puff of dust, but they have uh, taken all their resources, the Hubble telescope, and they've turned it directly toward uh, Comet Ison. So they're putting all their energy with the Hubble telescope in analyzing what these dark giants, these huge uh, rocks that made up Comet Ison as they sail through the sky, just exactly what is their threat to humanity. It's not the rocks. They won't hit us. It's the debris trail. It's the tail as it's spreading out. It's the debris trail that could pose a threat. Now, we don't know if it will, but uh, we know this, it could, and we have to pass through that. Now, I'm going to be right back in a moment. I have another information of a uh, meteorite that just whizzed by the Earth yesterday, and we didn't know it was coming till, within, till it was three days away. This is what I'm trying to say. They can't, NASA cannot capture these things quick enough, or if they are capturing what's coming, they're not telling us. Now, Jesus gave us a heads up when he said, There shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and distress of nations with perplexity and see in the waves of roaring. Men's hearts failing for fear of things coming upon the earth. We actually know that there's going to be great signs in the heavens, it says, and Jesus said in the book of Luke, chapter 11, or chapter 21, around verse uh, 11. But we certainly even know that the prophet Joel said that the, there is going to be, uh, the sun will turn dark as sackcloth of hair, and the moon will turn to blood, and the stars will fall from the heavens. And we know this in Revelation as well. So these are part of the signs, just some of them, though. You have to also look at the wars and the rumors of wars, and the nations rising against nations, and the kingdoms against kingdoms, and the false Christ and false prophets and, and for the falling away, the Bible says, except there come a falling away, the end shall not come. And except the gospel, and when this gospel is preached into all the world, then shall the end come. And so we, and we understand the abomination of desolation, the peace agreement. There's so many things that are all part of the factor of the end times we're living in. Are you saved? Don't miss today's show. Uh, you don't want to miss it from 12 noon to 3 p.m. Eastern at my website, www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. That's www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. Come early because uh, if my website maxes out, well, you can still watch the show live at my live stream channel. Or if that gets full, uh, we've got a new live stream channel, a second channel called www.new.livestream. Dot com slash Pastor Paul Begley Prophecy. Or if you're not home, you can listen if you can also listen to the broadcast on Blog Talk Radio or on your cell phone by just calling the number 347-324-5208. 
we can we can have at least 250 people listen by cell if you choose to. God bless. We'll talk to you a little bit later. We'll see you later this afternoon. I'll be right back with another powerful report about a meteor that just went by the earth.